What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today I wanted to talk about the Queen's Beast coin series, why I only have two of them and why I never really got into collecting them. I got a couple other collectible coins that I'd like to show off as well. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos. Go and get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel. Use promo code FLASH for a 10% discount this weekend only. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club for giveaways, live streams, deal alerts. You can watch Saturday and Sunday's videos right now if you want to. And Saturday morning, I'll be posting a brand new adventure vlog. This one's really interesting. You're going to want to watch that. So come hang out with us in the VIP Club. And of course... Last but not least, make sure to go and get your five free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Used to be two. They bumped it up to five for this month, so capitalize on that while you can. Refer one friend by the 18th. They're going to give you 10 free stocks for the referral. Refer three friends by the end of the month, and they're going to give you one to 15 free shares of Apple. Everything will be linked in the description. So today is Friday, April 8th, 2022. As the video comes out, that is. I'm actually filming it on Wednesday the 6th, 2022, which means I have no idea what the spot price is going to be by the time the video comes out. So head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video, what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. All right, so in today's video, I wanted to talk about silver, but more specifically, I wanted to talk about some of the Queen's Beast coins. I have two right here, and funny enough, these are the only two that I own. And to be honest with you, these are probably the only two that I'll ever own. There are a couple of other ones out there that I am quite fond of the way that they look, but they don't interest me enough to go out of my way to get them. But I wanted to explain something in this video. When it comes to the Queen's Beast series, when it comes to... I mean, for example, the, the Yale or the Greyhound like I have right here in my hand. Sure, they're cool looking coins. Kind of give me Harry Potter vibes, if I'm going to be honest with you. Even though I wasn't that big of a Harry Potter fan when I was a kid, I'm pretty sure Harry Potter is owned by Disney and D.I.S. gets a thumbs up from me. But anyway, when it comes to the Queen's Beast coins, of course, I always thought that they were cool looking coins. I remember back in 2018, I kind of discovered the series for the first time, and there were st still a couple more coins yet to be released at that point, and the ones that had already come out. I thought that they were nice looking. I thought that they were pretty cool. Very s similar thing could be said in, in 2019 and then the beginning of 2020. I felt the same way about them, but to be honest, during that entire period of time, these were completely off my radar. I was aware that they existed, but they're definitely not something that I would have been going after, especially not back then. Because when I first got started stacking, I got started just by going after the physical silver content. I just wanted the weight. I didn't want to start a coin collection or anything like that. I just wanted as many silver coins, rounds, and bars as I could possibly get my hands on. So these two right here... I actually didn't end up getting for any collectible reason. The first one I got was this one right here. It's a 2019 Four Nines Fine Yale of Beaufort, I believe it's pronounced. Absolutely beautiful coin. It looks almost looks almost demonic in a way. This this just looks like I don't even know how to explain it, but it's a cool looking coin. I know that for sure. Now, funny enough, when I got this, of course, just by the way that it looks, it's something that I would like to have, but just because something is a good looking coin, round or bar, doesn't mean that it's really worth the premium in my eyes. For a collector, sure. There are a lot of collectors out there who pay immense premiums, behemoths of premiums, and it's worth it to them through the eyes of a collector. But since day one, I've never been a coin collector. And even before I got into stacking, I don't think I ever really collected anything. Nothing serious, anyway. Never been a collector. 
So it's just not really my thing. So even though this is a cool looking coin, it's not something that I would have really been willing to fork over the cash for. But something funny happened. In 2020, when everything fell apart and the premiums went through the roof and then the spot price started to climb up to the highest it had been in several years, I remember spot price had either just hit $20 or, or it was about to cross over that $19 to $20 mark. And I remember I found this coin, a two ounce coin, by the way, when spot price was either just about to hit 20 or had just recently hit $20. And with this being a two troy ounce silver coin, according to the spot price, according to melt value, this right here was only worth about 40 bucks. Premium excluded, of course. You're going to have to factor in a premium. But funny enough, I didn't have to factor in a premium. I got this pretty close to spot. I mean, I did have to factor in a premium. I got it for like $43 or something like that. So just imagine getting one of these for $1.50 over spot per troy ounce. That is $3 over what, what it's actually worth. At the time, anyway. It's a $40 coin. I got it for probably about $42, $43 or something like that. So I got this for very close to spot. Which is why I had to hop all over that opportunity. You want to know what else I got pretty close to spot? That's on screen right here. The Silver Kraken. I know that's not the focal point of the video. I'll bring up the Creatures of the North a little bit later. But I got this, I believe, the same week. I believe I got this one first, because I know I got this one right before spot price hit $20. I think I got one when spot price was 19 and change, and I think I got the other one when it was $20 and change. So this one I got for about $40 as well, when spot price was roughly 19 bucks, somewhere within that range. I, I might be off by a dollar or so, but point being is that I got these two troy ounce silver coins that should, in theory, carry a much higher premium than a lot of other pieces, both very, very close to spot, which is why I hopped over the opportunity. But then moving on over to the Greyhound, this one right here, the, the beautiful Greyhound. I will be honest, I was never all that enthusiastic or jazzed up about this design. When I call it the beautiful Greyhound, I definitely do think that this is a beautiful piece of work, but this isn't anything that really stands out to me. This isn't anything that I'm drawn to in really any way, shape, or form. The Yale, on the other hand, the one that I just showed off, if that generally carried a low premium, that would have 100% been something that I would go after just because I liked the way that it looked. I don't like the way that this looks enough to actually really go after it. The reason I did was because it was the first time I had the opportunity to get my hands on a Queen's Beast by pre-ordering it. So I knew that it was a hot, trendy topic going on within the silver community. And I was like, hey, you know what? Screw it. It's silver. It doesn't have to be anything that I'm in love with. It's still silver either way. It doesn't have to have a beautiful design, even though it is a beautiful design. I just wasn't really all that excited about the way that it looked. But it doesn't matter how it looks. It's still silver. So I ended up pre-ordering one of these. I don't remember when that was. I don't even remember what month it was, but it was in 2021. This is a 2021 coin, by the way. So I pre-ordered it early in the year, or at some point during the year, and eventually it arrived in the mail. And I did an unboxing, and I did a couple comparison videos using this coin right here. I knew it was the last piece of the puzzle when it comes to the Queen's Beast coin series. So I just figured it was probably appropriate. I figured it was a pretty good idea. And I figured a lot of people were interested in the coin. A lot of people were talking about the coin. So I really just got it for the sake of making videos out of it. Again, it wasn't anything that I was overly interested in. It wasn't anything that I was overly excited about. It just seemed like a pretty good idea at the time. So I said, you know what? Sometimes in life, you just got to say screw it. And that's exactly what I did. So those are the only two Queen's Beasts that I have, and they're probably most likely the only Queen's Beasts that I'll ever have, unfortunately. And the reason I say unfortunately is because as cool as it would be to have all of them, there's one that really stands out to me. 
There's one other Queen's Beast coin that I would love to have, and it would be the Griffin. I love the way that looks. I'm a huge fan of that Griffin. Again, similar to what I said earlier in the video, it's not because it would be an addition to the collection. It's just because I like the way that it looks. I love the design. Again, Harry Potter vibes. But that's just a cool looking coin. A two troy ounce silver griffin. I think it would be pretty cool. But either way, I got the Yale just because the opportunity popped up. I got the Greyhound because it was the final piece of the puzzle when it comes to the Queen's Beast series. But then afterwards, they released the Queen's Beast collector's coin, or completer coin, I believe it's called, where it has a small image of each of the beasts, including the ultimate beast of them all, the queen herself. <laughs> Now we're going to come back to the Queen's Beast in just one moment. I wanted to quickly talk about two other coins that I have on display that you can see right up there in the upper corner. I know that this is not a Creatures of the North video. I just wanted to quickly talk about these because they are, I guess you can say, kind of sort of similar in a way. We got the Queen's Beasts over there, and now we have the Creatures of the North right here. Check these out. These are pretty cool. And to be honest with you, I like these even more than the Queen's Beast series. And I'm talking about the actual beasts, the actual images on the coins. I like these a whole lot more. I don't really care about the collectability. I don't care about anything like that. None of that matters to me. Through the eyes of a collector, it might be a different story, but for me, it could not be less relevant. I decided to go after these because I just loved the way that they looked. And to be honest with you, I didn't even know about the series when I got my hands on the Kraken. I was just scrolling through, I think it was eBay or something like that. I was scrolling through eBay and similar to the Yale coin that I just showed off, I stumbled upon this. And like I just said, spot price was about $19 at the time. And I got this for about 40 bucks. It's a two troy ounce coin. I got this very, very, very close to spot. I couldn't pass up on that. Not to mention, look how crazy of a design this is. And I know it wasn't done intentionally, but this is a 2020 coin. And the design is a giant squid, a kraken, destroying a ship. So my, my automatic interpretation was, wow, it's almost like that ship represents the economy and, and, and the Kraken represents the year of 2020 absolutely butchering everything. That's not what it's supposed to be, but that's kind of what it looked like at the very beginning. And I, I say that kind of as a joke, but also kind of seriously at the same time. Either way, it's a beautiful looking coin. And it was one of those that I, I just, I saw it and I was like, oh man, I gotta have it. Plus the premium was right. The premium was pretty much not even existent. So I had to get one. Lo and behold, this was the first coin released for the Creatures of the North series. I didn't even know there was a series going on. I just did a little bit of research and I was like, okay, yeah, it's, it's from the Royal Canadian Mint. It's a cool looking coin. Then I found out that more were going to be released. So that's kind of what got me into it. I still absolutely would not call myself a collector. But I did get the second piece of the puzzle as well. Once again, just because of the way that it looks. Look at that right there. A friggin' werewolf, are you kidding me? Canada just has a knack for different coin designs. So when I found out that the next piece of the puzzle was gonna be a werewolf, I was like, oh my God, I gotta have it. So I got it. So this was the 2020 coin for the series. This was the 2021 coin for the series. And the 2022 coin for the series has yet to be released. If you want to know some of my thoughts, because we're going to go back to the Queen's Beast in a moment. If you want to know some of my thoughts on what I think the next design might be, go on over to my second channel. It's Mikey DYDSS2. I posted a video a couple weeks ago. I post videos every single week over there. 
I posted a video maybe two, three weeks back talking about what I'm most likely expecting the next creature of the North to be. So go and subscribe to that second channel. And also, while we're on the topic of these things, make sure to go and get yourself a DYDSS t-shirt, coffee, mug, sticker, or hoodie as well. I'd really appreciate that. Use promo code FLASH for a 10% discount this weekend only. Thank you in advance for supporting a small business. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club. And of course, go and get your five free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. You can drop as little as a penny. It still counts. And I know because that's what I did. You get five free stocks just for joining. You refer one friend to the app by the 18th. They're going to give you 10 free stocks for the referral. It's part of their advertising budget. And of course, last but not least, if you refer three friends to the app, they're going to give you a spin on the Weeble Wheel, which guarantees you at least one free share of Apple with a chance of winning two, three, five, seven, maybe even 15 free shares of Apple. Weeble link in the description. Time is running out. Don't pass up on an opportunity. But now that we got that out of the way, let's get back to the Queen's Beasts because there's something kind of interesting that I wanted to say. These right here, believe it or not, I mean, I'm sure many of you already know this, but for those of you who are relatively new or if you're someone like me who just wasn't paying attention to the Queen's Beasts or anything like that, yeah, these are two troy ounce coins. But you can also get 10 troy ounce coins or 10 troy ounce versions of the same coins. Imagine that. Imagine holding one of these in your hand, but it's a 10 troy ounce silver coin. A nice big coin. You don't see a lot of 10 troy ounce coins out there. You see a lot of 10 ounce bars all the time, actually. I, I have several 10 ounce bars. How often do you see a 10 ounce round or coin? How often do you see a 10 ounce circular piece of silver? Not that often. So that's definitely an option as well. And, you know, like I said before, I mean, if the premium's right, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say no. I don't, I've never been one to pass up on an opportunity. But unfortunately, when it comes to coins that are typically viewed as collectible pieces, not a whole lot of opportunities present themselves. They generally carry a higher premium, especially when it's such a powerful or prominent series such as the Queen's Beast coin series. Very popular coin series. Very popular series to, to work on collecting. And like I said before, I've never been a coin collector or really any other type of collector, but I can still appreciate a beautiful design when I see one, and these are very well done pieces of art. I don't think there's a lot of people who, who could look at this and be like, oh, that was poorly done or, or it looks horrible. No, these are incredible looking coins. I don't believe the Greyhound looks nearly as ferocious as some of the other designs out there. I mean, the Yale, it, it looks kind of demonic in a way. I mean, this is definitely a beast. The Greyhound... You know, I, I was just in the house the other day. I had two greyhounds walking around. They're giant babies. So <laughs> anyway, I definitely would like to get the griffin. I think that would be an awesome coin to have. Unfortunately, to my understanding, I'm pretty sure the griffin is the coin with the highest premium within the entire series. Last I looked, and this was going back a while ago, this is probably going back to mid-2020, right around when I got the Yale the first Queen's Beast that I got. I'm pretty sure I looked up the price of the Griffin, and I very, very, very vividly remember seeing triple digits. I remember seeing a two troy ounce silver coin, the Griffin, going for like $120 or something like that. That right there, once again, through the eyes of a collector, it might be 100% worth it. For me, I can't justify it. I can't figure out a way to force myself to pay that crazy high of a premium for a coin that I just simply like the way it looks. That, that, that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. I think it's an incredible looking coin. I would like to have it, but it's not one of those pieces that you see it and you're like, oh man, I gotta have it. Don't care how much it costs. Don't care what the premium's looking like. I'm getting it no matter what. That's just not how I roll. 
The way I like to stick to things, especially when it comes to the silver and especially when it comes to the gold, I go after the lowest possible premium coins, rounds, and bars that I can get my hands on. I've been saying for <laughs> going on four and a half years at this point, generic silver, for the most part, is probably the best way to go, especially as of right now. I always like the Silver Eagles and the Maple Leafs. Unfortunately, the premiums went up a little bit, and they went up a lot on the Silver Eagle, so I'm no longer stacking really either of those coins. And as of really the last year and a half to two years, ever since everything got flipped upside down in 2020, I've been focusing almost exclusively on 90% junk constitutional silver. I understand it's pretty boring. I understand it's pretty bland or, or dull. Not really anything overly exciting, exciting about that, especially when we're talking about a coin collection. I, I know people go absolutely nuts over different coins, rounds, and bars that you can collect. Again, it's never really been my thing. It's never been anything that I cared all, all that much about. I'm not in it to collect. I'm in it for long-term wealth preservation. I don't see anything wrong with paying a little bit higher of a premium every once in a while just for a coin that you like. There are a lot of people out there who don't buy anything unless it's to add to their collection. For me, all of the cash that I convert into silver, for the most part nowadays, like I said, it's 90% junk constitutional silver. I wouldn't reject a generic silver rounder bar. I wouldn't reject a standard everyday common coin like that. Sure, absolutely. That's my style. But I wouldn't be entirely against paying a little bit higher of a premium than I would ordinarily be comfortable with paying if it's just something that I would like. For example, whatever the third Creature of the North coin is going to be, I have no idea what it's going to be. They haven't even released a hint or a clue or anything like that. No story, nothing. We have no idea what the third one is going to be. Some of us have some predictions or some expectations. Again, if you want to know mine, go and check out that backup channel video. The point being is that we have no idea what they're going to be. And I'm going to be honest with you. Regardless of what it is, I'm probably going to end up getting it. Not really doing it for the collection. I'm just doing it because I, I'm i willing to bet the stack on it. I'm going to be a fan of whatever it is. I like the series. It's pretty cool. We got a Kraken on one. We got a Werewolf on the other. Whatever the third one is going to be, they're not going to drop the ball. Anyway, I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. When it comes to the Queen's Beast series, do you have any of the coins? And if so, do you have any 2 ounces? Do you have any 10 ounce Queen's Beast coins? Maybe do you have any of the gold Queen's Beasts as well? I personally don't have a single one of them, so I didn't even figure that was I didn't even think that was worth mentioning. But I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know. What are your thoughts on everything related to today's video topic when it comes to the Queen's Beast or even when it comes to the Creatures of the North or even when it comes to just coin collections in general? I understand a majority of the people who watch my videos are stacking for long-term wealth preservation purposes and are doing everything in their power to go after whatever they can get their hands on for the lowest possible premium. But do you ever make an exception? Is there any specific coin round or bar that you've been willing to in the past pay a higher premium for just because you liked it. Nothing wrong with stacking what you like. Nothing wrong with paying a little bit more currency to have some fun. Nothing wrong with that at all. Generally, it's not my style, but I'm not against it. And every now and again, a coin will pop up that has a really crazy design. And I say to myself, hey, you know what? As long as the premium's not too astronomically high, I'm going to go after that. So I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Go and get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. We got t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, coffee mugs in a bunch of different designs. We have a lot of different products that are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, by the way. 
DYDSS store will be linked in the description. Use promo code FLASH for a 10% discount this weekend only. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club, which is where I do giveaways every single month, live streams multiple times a week, deal alerts on silver and gold almost every single day. You can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. You can watch Saturday and Sunday's videos right now if you want to. And of course, every Saturday morning, I post a brand new adventure vlog. That one will be dropped tomorrow morning. And this one's really interesting. You're going to want to watch that. And there are a ton of other perks as well. I guarantee you the value exceeds the cost. VIP club link in the description. And of course, last but certainly not least, make sure to go and get your five free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Normally it's two. They bumped it up to five for this month, so capitalize on that while you can. You can deposit as little as a penny, and it still works. I know, because that's what I did. And you get five free stocks just for joining. If you refer one friend by April 18th, they're going to give you 10 free stocks for the referral. It's part of their advertising budget. Rather than wasting currency on billboards and TV commercials, they reward the users for helping them build their app with them. And then, of course, if you refer three friends by the end of the month, Weeble's going to give you a spin on the spin wheel, which guarantees you at least one free share of Apple worth about 170 bucks right now with the chance of winning two, three, five, seven, or maybe even 15 free shares of Apple each worth about $170 right now. It's whatever you land on, that's what you get, but you're guaranteed at least one. Don't pass up on an opportunity. Weeble link in the description. Time is running out. If you don't want the stocks, go and get them anyway. Sell them. Congratulations. Now you have the cash to go and get you some silver and gold if you want. Maybe some Queen's Beasts. Maybe enough to go and get the Griffin if you want. We will link in the description. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again. What are your thoughts on everything shared in today's video? When it comes to the Queen's Beast coin series, is that something that you were ever interested in? Was that something that you never really cared for all that much? Maybe you started the series when the first one or maybe the first one or two were released and you've been picking one up every time that they've released one ever since and you just ended up completing the series. Maybe you did something similar to me where you didn't really care for the series all that much or maybe you didn't even know anything about it until afterwards and maybe you picked up a couple of random ones over the years. Maybe you don't have any at all. Maybe you plan on keeping it that way. But when it comes to the Queen's Beast specifically, or really just any coin series to collect in general for that matter, is that something that you've ever been interested in? I understand most of us are stacking for long-term wealth preservation purposes, but do you have any collections on the side? Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.